सब कैसे बनाते हैं I know that you haven't actually played like very much on the piano, but your first instinct, how's it sounding? How's it feeling? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go to the Lafado Z. Yeah, I A hot child. Uh, 
here, please know where your exits are. There's fire extinguishers in the silver box underneath the mezzanine. Have a plan. Run, hide, or fight. I did not say that right. Run, hide, or fight. I'm not sure what I said. I don't think it was that. There's a defibrillator in the temple's main office. Our tornado locations are in the hallway where the bathrooms are or downstairs in the school area. First aid kits are available where Eli is by the AV booth, and if you see something, say something. Other than calling out for emergency, we invite you to silence your cell phones. Thank you so much for our little safety briefing. We are going to begin this classic Shabbat with a familiar melody, Maya Hayom Shabbat Shalom. And just before we start, I want to just give us all a wonderful mazel. Our piano is returned to us after almost two years of repair work and another year and a half before they picked it up to repair it. So it's the first time that we have our Steinway in like since COVID. And I'm very excited that Stacy is joining us playing it. And thank you to David and Darcy for joining us for Classic Shabbat. Shalom. I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath. 
and think about something that happened this week. From last Shabbat until this Shabbat, something that was the best. Sometimes it's a hard week, sometimes it's a wonderful week. Something hopefully rose as the cream to the top of the cup to be able to say what was good about this past week. And as you take another breath and think about it, I'm going to invite you to stand up, turn to a neighbor, across an aisle, to the back of the room, greet somebody, and if you're brave enough, to share something good about your week. Thank you for welcoming each other. I hope that thinking about something positive helps put you into the mood for um, having another wonderful restful Shabbat and potentially even a whole restful and beautiful week. You're not always in charge. Sometimes life gets in the way. But if we can cultivate a sense of gratitude and a sense of remembering the good things that happen, perhaps it can help us to be more satisfied with life as it comes to us. We read together. Some hearts are full of gratitude and joy. They are overflowing with the happiness of love and the joy of life. They are eager to confront the day, to make the world more fair. They are recovering from illness or have escaped misfortune. And we rejoice with them. Some hearts ache with sorrow, disappointments weigh heavily upon them, and they have tasted despair. Families have been broken, loved ones lie in a bed of pain, death has taken those whom they have cherished. May our presence and sympathy bring them comfort. That some hearts are embittered, they have sought answers in vain, ideals are mocked and betrayed, life has lost its meaning and value. May the knowledge that we, too, are searching restore their hope and give them courage to believe that all is not emptiness. Some spirits hunger. They long for friendship. They crave understanding. They yearn for warmth. May we, in our common need and striving, gain strength from one another as we share our joys, lighten each other's burdens, and pray for the well-being of our community. We continue with Lakato D, the metaphorical greeting of the Sabbath bride as we, Israel, marry Shabbat. <laughs> Baby. 
month of Elul, we recite from Psalm 27, Achat Sha'alti, just one thing I have asked of God, only this do I seek, to dwell in God's house all the days of my life, to behold divine sweetness and beauty, to gaze in delight. to strengthen our bonds with our people Israel. Like Jews of generation past, we celebrate the grandeur of creation. Like Jews of every age, we echo our people's ancient call for justice. Our celebration is a sharing of memory and hope. We are Jews, but each of us is unique. We stand apart and alone with differing feelings and insights. And yet we are not entirely alone and separate. For we are children of one people and one heritage. Our celebration unites many separate selves into a single chorus. And we are one in search of life's meaning. All of us know despair and exaltation. All bear burdens. All have moments of weakness and times of strength. All sing songs of sorrow and of love. May our celebration bring us strength along our way. In this circle of hope, in the presence of the sacred, may the heart come to know itself and its best, finding a fresh impulse to love the good. May our celebration lead us to work for the good, and may this Shabbat give strength to us and to our people Israel. I invite you to rise if you're comfortable in doing so for the call to worship. I
power of change. Within it we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? Baruch ata Adonai, Hama'ariv Aravi. Oh, <laughs> 
The Sabbath has descended, enfolding us in its mantle of peace. It brings us to the pre pre precious gift of time, time to embrace family and friends, to reflect more deeply on the meaning and purpose of our lives, and to worship in the beauty of holiness. May our Sabbaths always be sanctuaries of love and devotion, bringing contentment to our hearts, happiness to our homes, and blessings to our people. We may be seated as we continue with the say, our prayer that our, is, our prayers are acceptable. <laughs>
point in our service where we think of those who are in need of healing, healing of the body, healing of the spirit. And we pray that whether they are able to receive that healing or just to learn how to live with this new reality, that they find comfort as we pray for them. We are thinking of Hal Arnold, Shelley Babinger, Virginia Becker, Adriana Benson, Jean Brockow, Lisa Brunkhorst, Sandy Christofferson, Natalie Urker, Scott Harkis, Nancy Friedland, Marcy Frost, Nathan Gary, Larry Hillenstein, Howard Goldstein, Jean Herman, Alan Hurst, Patrick Johnson, Joan Johnson, Ronald Kaplan, Les Kay, Samuel Kinkel, Karen Levin, Bailey Lincecum, Emily Lincecum, Randy Matson, Nadine Ostrow, Betty Piskin, Maddie Rahoffer, Edie Rossman, Amy Rogers, Holly Rosenberg, George Sachs, Rabbi Robert Sharp, Sherry Sigwig, Susan Snitzer, Edie Spiegel, Kaylin Stoner, Raylene Savoda, Chrissy Stewart, Matt Stewart, Jody Becker Vinci, Laura J. West, Brent Wine, Abram Lucina, Aviva Bastown. If there are others who you'd like to add at this time, I invite you to share their names out loud or to put them in. join together in our prayer for the descendants of Abraham. In times of war and terror, it is the innocent who suffer the most. As the saying goes, war is not hell, because in hell there are no innocents. Ribono shalom, God, we pray for all those who are suffering. May the leaders of the myriad of communities recognize the humanity, not just of the other, but also of their own. We pray for a speedy resolution to this conflict, May all the descendants of Abraham, the children of Isaac and Ishmael, come to see the humanity in each other. For on that day, peace can dwell upon the land and her inhabitants. Until that day, we pray for all who are suffering, and we ask you, God, to bring comfort to them and all those who are bereaved. Amen. God, who spread human beings over the face of all the earth, hear our voice now. Those of us who dwell in America, sending healing, send healing to this fractured country. Gather together the voices of hope, love, integrity, and inclusion. The voices of wisdom, compassion, and truth. Call us to be stewards of our nation's cities, its streams, deserts, and plains, 
its mountains and valleys, water and air. Call us to attend to the poor, the downtrodden, the suffering in our midst and at our gates. Call us to fellowship with all peoples of this country so that at last the prophetic dream will come to fruition. The rough places will be made plain, the crooked places will be made straight. God's glory shall be revealed and all flesh as one shall behold it. As I stared at the blank sheet of paper, digital but still, I had so many thoughts going through my mind. Do I want to teach about Hezbollah? Do I want to talk about Israel? About the pager bombs? What do I even think of this action? Should I talk about Jewish ethical tradition of war? Should I defend it or accuse it? Should I discuss nation states and peoplehood? Should I discuss the Torah portion's emphasis on blessings and curses? All these topics I started researching. All were filled with more and more rabbit holes of information, and the time was ticking by with Shabbat staring down at me. What did I need to say? What would you want to hear? I feel like I've been thinking about and learning about Israel almost nonstop this past year. One of you once told me, I want to come to services to get away from the news, but here you are still talking about it. Someone else shared that because of the current war and the, their current anti-Zionist feelings, they are taking a break from Judaism in general. What does it mean as a spiritual leader leading a community in crisis? Is it my role to share my passion, okay, maybe obsession, with you? Or is it my job to follow your lead? Is it my role to comfort the disturbed and or to disturb the comfortable? And how might I successfully do that anyway? It seems clear to me that one role of a Jewish leader is to seek out a Jewish lens or perspective on complex issues. Not everyone will agree that we should use a Jewish lens, and not everyone will agree that my interpretation is, in fact, the Jewish interpretation. So let's look at a really tough and relevant question for right now. Are Jews pacifists? Torah is filled with commandments about peace and about protecting humanity, whether the basic, love your neighbor as yourself, from Leviticus, or a more direct, Seek peace and pursue it from Psalms. You would not be mistaken to believe that Torah and God wish for Jews to be peaceful and for Jews to have a universal view of humanity. As Reformed Jews, we put primacy on the theological idea that all humans are created B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God, thereby making humans godly and valuable. Combined with this, many times Torah teaches us to love the orphan, the widow, and the stranger. It is no wonder we come to a universal understanding of valuing human life, not just Jewish life, but all of humanity. But Torah is not only peace-filled. We, as we are reading in Deuteronomy, at this season, we learn of many rules pertaining to the conquering of the land. God not only is described as a God of war, Adonai Tzavaot, God commands the Israelites to go into battle. We know that pikuach nefesh, saving a life, is a command for which almost all other commandments can be broken. But Torah also teaches that killing in self-defense is permissible. Some even say commanded. Lo tirtzach, the sixth commandment of the top ten. Christians tend to translate this as, thou shalt not kill. But most Jewish translations say, you shall not murder, making a distinction between justified, unjustified, and accidental taking of life. Not only does Torah lead to, not only does Torah not lead to a clear answer on war and peace, I would say it leans towards war with instructions for conquering Canaan, as a means to create a utopian, peaceful society once the Israelites are safely settled in the land. One might summarize this theory as, 
war which leads to peace. For nearly 2,000 years, all discussions of war and Israelite army and the ethical behavior of an army were completely theoretical. After the year 70 of the Common Era, the Israelites were exiled across the Roman Empire with no army to dream of proper or improper behavior for. In fact, the destruction of Jerusalem and the experience of exile was so traumatic, the sages who helped create rabbinic Judaism de-emphasized war and power to help Jews live under the rule of others. But Talma did not give up on the concept of self-defense. In multiple places, Talmud teaches, if someone comes to kill you, kill him first. So where do we go from here with our divided thoughts on Israel's military might, military ethics and efficacy? Where do we go to understand the universality of all human life in balance with the nature of claiming one's own, your neighbor, your clan, your people, your family? Like most things in Judaism, there is not only one right answer, and surely a multiplicity of opinions can be gained by looking through a Jewish lens. Some lenses will emphasize the universal, some the particular, some the peaceful, some the defensive. My wish for this community is that we see the value of finding different answers, and perhaps have some humility that the answer we came to might not be the only correct one. When we see other community members looking through Jewish lenses, yet coming to different conclusions. What happens when one concludes that Israel is fundamental to the Jewish identity, and others conclude its actions are fundamentally antithetical to Judaism? What should we teach our students? What should we teach from the Bima? I ask, is there room for both? Just as Torah teaches the dichotomy that God is of peace and God is of war, that justice and peace are worthy pursuits while simultaneously commanding that all idolaters be put to the sword, so too can we modern Jews understand each other. We are human. We are filled with contradictions. Sometimes I care more for those who are like me. Sometimes I care more for the stranger. Both, in fact, are commanded by Torah. We, th this week, I was struck with two simultaneous thoughts when I read about the pagers exploding in Lebanon. Hezbollah members, they deserve it. And that seems like terrorism. Personally, I'm still coming to terms with the nuance between the two of what I think about this new action. I recognize that what I already believe about Israel, about self-defense, about war, about aggression, about terrorism, about humanity, about collateral damage, otherwise known as the death of innocent human beings, all these come to bear on my thought process and my judgment of whether this action was right or wrong, justified or immoral, or somewhere in the middle. I hope you will be open to the multiplicity of opinions and the multiplicity of methodologies that come to such opinions. Help us to strengthen our community by being open to those who disagree with and finding a Jewish lens in their conclusions as well. We continue with Aleinu the Shabbat, and we rise if we're comfortable in doing Shabbat Ladon Hakol, Latet Gudalali Otse Brishit, Shalos Hanek Yaharat Sot, Velos Amanu Kemish Bechota Adama, Shalos Am Helkinu Kahem, Vigoralinu Kerkol Amanam, Vianach Nu Koreim, Umish Tahavim Umadim, Lifne Mele. Hakadosh Baruch Hu, v'nemar v'hayadonai l'melech al kol ha'aretz 
Shiva, the first seven days of mourning for Linda Sharp, mother of our rabbi Benjamin Sharp, for Jerome Kaiman, for Scott Thompson. We are in Shloshim, the first 30 days of mourning for Michael Towerman, Eric Mazur, Hirsch Goldberg Holen, Carmel Gott, Eden Yerushalmi, Alexander Lavanov, Al Almog Sar Sarusi, Master Sergeant Ori Danino, and for Morton Mort Zuber. We are at yard site, the anniversary of the death for Abraham Alexander, Aaron H. Appleby, Abraham Bleicher, Minnie Yaka Breswell, Dr. Bruce Euler, Patty S. Cohn, Scott A. Elwood, Richard J. Epstein, Aaron M. Ferrer, Nina Freefeld Giles, Albert E. Galinsky, Beatrice Galinsky, Samuel E. Galinsky, Herman E. Cully, Jack M. Levin, Sidney Levinson, Sylvia R. Lewis, Marshall I. Lewis, Marilyn P. Mambitz, Sidoni Stern Marburg, Ben Passer, Warren E. Bud Phillips, Charles D. Plotkin, Henry N. Pollock, Jerome Frostman, Frosterman, David Lewis Roden, George, Dr. George D. Rothman, Wilma Claire Rogers, Albert I. Rosen, Betty Rubeck, Albert Schultz, Bert, Berthold Singer, Hal White, Gussie L. Wertheimer, Norman Whitman. If, I, if there are any additions or corrections, I invite you to say them now or to type them in. our custom to rise as one community as we remember them along with those who do not have someone to say Kaddish for them, especially those who died in the Shoah and all those who are dying as we are witnessing a world filled with black violence around the world and especially in the Middle East. We join together. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah v'alma divrach kirutei v'yamlich malchutei Bechayechon of Yomechon of Chaye de Fol Beit Yisrael, Bagalau Vizman Karivimru, Amen. Yehesh me Rabba Mevarach Leolam Ulme Almaya, Yit Barach, Vish Tabach, Vit Paar, Vit Roman, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shmedi Kudsha, Brechu, Le Ela Min Holbir Hata Vishirata, Tush Bechata Venechemata, Damiran Belma Vimru, Amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, huya ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'al kol yoshvei tevel, v'imru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and to all the world, to which we say, amen. You may be seated. It has come to that time of year where my announcement page is two pages and two slides long, so please bear with me. It's called the holiday season. I want to start by thanking everybody who made tonight possible. Stacy on piano, David on cello, Darcy on oboe. The back of the house we have Scott, Phyllis, and Ed. Eli is on tech. Our hospitality is from Toby's team. We thank our Onex shopper, Ann Rickover, who also likes candles and our Zoom maven, Dory Bernstein, and our challah is brought to us by Adam Catering. 
we'd like to invite anybody who is a member of our board of Gov board of directors to please stand up and give a little wave so everybody can find you. Rabbi likes to say comments, complaints to the board, compliments only to the clergy. Thanks. <laughs> it's fun that way. We're here to hear anything. It's all right. As you are, you already missing summer camp. Us too. Good thing us really is here this weekend to help make any decisions for summer 2025. Join them tomorrow, Saturday, September 21st, from 2 to 4 at Helados Locos a, to, meet assist, uh, to meet Assistant Director Matt Schabelman. Matt will also join us for Sunday's Youth Learning. So if you have children or grandchildren who went to us really, or you're interested in learning about it, or your grandchildren are, come get ice cream on us really. It'll be fun. We've received our annual Jewish calendars from Igo Van and Storage. If you are interested in taking one of these free calendars home, please stop by the front desk. I think there's some out in the, in the hall over there. Our social justice committee is asking you to join the fight as they partner with Protect Our Rights in order to protect access to reproductive rights in Nebraska. Join us on Sunday, September 29th to write postcards on, or on Wednesday, October 16th for a phone bank. During both these events, training and refreshments will be provided. Let us know you're coming. Reach out to Rabbi Berezin with any questions. The high holidays are upon us. Okay. The Book of Remembrance deadline is today. If you'd like to commemorate a loved one, please return your form ASAP to the front desk. Go to High Holiday website to request pre-printed name tags, register for childcare and youth programming, register for Zoom if you're coming virtually or just to all around stay updated on what's happening at Temple Israel for the Days of Awe. We are also looking for volunteers for the High Holidays to help with ushering, greeting, and assisting with the food drive. If you are interested, fill out the form or contact our membership in great engagement and events coordinator, Allison. We invite you to enter the high holiday season with the beauty and grandeur of our Slikot service a week from tomorrow, Saturday, September 28th. Join us before, join us for a showing and brief discussion of the movie, Heading Home, A Tale of Team Israel which showcases the challenges and triumphs as they unite to represent their country in the World Baseball Classic. It joins sports, Judaism, Israel, anti-Semitism, all in one movie. I think it should be pretty fun and exciting. And you know, if you like sports, good thing to come to. The doors will open at 6.30 for pre-movie snacks and conversation. The movie starts at seven, services to follow. We are also less than two weeks away from Rosh Hashanah. That full moon that you saw the other night is taunting us. By the time we get a new moon, that's Rosh Hashanah. That means it's time for our annual food drive. We will have bags available starting Arab Rosh Hashanah for you to bring your donations to Temple. We will have a list of recommended items attached to the bag, which include proteins and veggies. You can bring your items in any time between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur but hope you will join us on Yom Kippur as we sort and pack the food. Last year, we were able to donate 3,400 pounds of food to the food bank of the Heartland, and this year, we are hoping to gather over 4,000 pounds. So, when you're going shopping, think about how to help, and cereal is less heavy than green beans, just so you know. Um, okay, pounds, so that we, we hope you will help us get to that total. There is still room on our adult civil rights trip, which is taking place in April of 2025. Please sign up and please contact Rabbi Berezin for information. Temple Israel has become a co-sponsor of Every Voice, Every Vote. This nonpartisan effort is inspired by the ancient sage Hillel who taught, do not separate yourself from the community. Join us as we come together in a com community for a vital series which will take, which We'll, where we'll take action and learn from trusted nonpartisan organizations, whether we're turning out the vote to support reproductive freedom ballot measures, helping voters overcome barriers to the ballot, or making sure that every vote is counted. We can act together through many means to ensure all have an equal say in decisions that impact our lives. Just keep coming.
Just keep showing up, keep reading your emails. I know that like sometimes there's too many emails. It's only because we have a number of people who like to say, but I didn't know about that. So if you're guilty of ignoring your emails, don't be part of the problem. Okay. <laughs> We are going to continue with Kiddush and Motzi, our closing song, and then, of course, the hearing of the shofar. I invite you to rise if you're comfortable in doing so. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Borei Peri Hargafen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kedushanu B'mitzvotav V'ratzavanu. Shabbat kodesho ve'ahava u'v'ratzon inchilanu zikaron lemaase v'reishit ki hu'yom tehila lemikrai kodesh zecher letziat mitraim ki vanu v'acharta v'otanu ki da'ashda mikoho. Shabbat kodshecha ve'ahava u'v'ratzon inchaltanu Baruch atah Adonai mekadish ha-shabbat L'chaim Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Hamotzi lochem in haaret b'teavon. Our closing song, Ein Kaloheinu, is a newer melody written by cantor Eric Concius, who was one of our cantors here, um, I don't know, 20 plus, 25 years ago, something like that. It is a really fun melody. The En Kaloheinu repeats several times. The same melody is used on the verses. I hope that you'll join in, and we are going to use this on Rosh Hashanah also, so I hope that you will pick it up.
I'm just on autopilot. I even have the slide with the shofar. Eileen, thank you. Tikia Gadola. Yashakoff. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.